Kids have been exposed to a major hack. You can predict your next credit card number. What? The NSA's bulk collections come to an end and the Pirate Bay lives on. All coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for December 2nd, 2015, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Support the show directly via our Patreon at patreon.com slash threatwire so that we can make more shows for you along with an RSS feed. I hope everyone had a great holiday, but it appears that our cyber criminals didn't actually go on vacation because there's still plenty of news to get to. First off, I do want to mention just this morning, Adobe has posted an update on their siting with Flash and their new agreements with HTML5. We'll put the link in the show notes to that onto our first actual story. Now, while everyone was enjoying their turkey leftovers on Friday, another vulnerable site was being exposed. This time, it is the toy making company called VTech, who has an online connection app for parents and children called Kids Connect. Practically 5 million parents and 200,000 children had their data exposed, as originally reported by the website Motherboard. So, what was stolen? Parents and kids' names, email addresses, passwords, secret questions and answers, IP addresses of physical addresses, chat logs, photos of kids and their parents, and download history. Yeah. That was a lot of stuff. Now, passwords were stored in a one-way MD5 encrypted hash. Way cool, actually not really, because apparently you can easily reverse engineer that by just Googling the hash and figuring out the password. Now, everything else was in plain text. Eh, eh. No credit card data was stored on VTech servers, so that's good. And all affected users were contacted by the company immediately after finding out that this hack happened. Now, VTech has taken several of their sites offline while they go through a security assessment of everything that they have. But let's talk about why this happened for a quick sec. So according to Troy Hunt, VTech's online portals were using outdated wares, including Flash, ASP.NET 2.0 framework, which probably should be updated to a newer version, along with vulnerables, vulnerabilities allowing for SQL injection attacks and no use of SSL. Yeah, so given there was no cryptographic encryption happening pretty much anywhere for the data that they were collecting, except for the really shoddy MD5 password hashing, this was kind of just waiting to happen. Luckily, the hacker who discussed the breach is not releasing all of the data that was stolen, but users of VTech's online platforms are well advised to change their passwords. As of Monday, November 30th, our BFFs at the National Security Agency of the United States are officially closing their bulk phone record business for good, or at least for now, as far as we know. A statement made by President Obama in January of 2014 stated that the NSA would no longer be able to collect said bulk phone records under Section 215 of the USA Patriot Act. And that date came about just a couple of days ago at time of recording. Now, the newer USA Freedom Act now requires that government agencies like the NSA must file for court approval before collecting data on individual people, so no more of that bulk stuff. Any data collected will require a legitimate reason for approval. Remember the Pirate Bay? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Some of us do. <laughs> They're still around, and if you're in Sweden, they aren't going anywhere. Many entertainment companies, including Warner Music and Sony Music, filed a lawsuit last year against Swedish ISPs to block the Pirate Bay, but a Stockholm district court denied them their win, stating that Swedish ISPs are not doing anything criminal. They are simply providing an access to an open internet. Since the ruling was made by a district court, there is still a chance that the media companies could appeal to one of Sweden's higher courts in the hopes of winning. Until then, they owe the ISPs $150,000 in legal costs. Our last story today is all about credit cards and a $10 device that can simulate a new prediction attack. Sammy Kamkar, who recently released research done on key fobs for cars and how easy they are to spoof, has shared information on a flaw on American Express card numbers. So it turns out, when you cancel an Amex card, say if it was stolen or you just lost it, it's relatively easy to figure out what your next card's number will be because their algorithm for generating new card numbers and 
expiration dates is a predictable pattern. Camcar was able to build a small $10 device called the MagSpoof that can store those new card numbers and send out a magnetic signal when placed next to a point-of-sale system, allowing the user to spoof swiping a magnetic stripe card that he has predicted. He has contacted Amex about this flaw, but Amex has claimed that it's not a major security issue because they have extra layers of security to validate a user's identity during a transaction. Hmm. Now, while many businesses have been tr been transitioning to chip and pin or chip and signature, which is not really necessarily all that secure either, instead of mag stripes, given how slowly the transition will happen in the U.S., I mean, for real, I just went shopping and a business has the system, but they put blue painter's tape over the chip reader, so I couldn't use it. I still had to use the mag stripe. This is still a problem, and it really needs to be fixed because people still have to use their magnetic stripe swipers. Patreon.com slash threatwire to support us and a huge thanks to all y'all that already do a big thanks to jamie for sending us his photo of pistol who obviously has a very classy taste in beer and if you want to see your pet featured on the show check out our patreon perk levels we are working towards creating an rss feed and a second episode per week rotating your three hosts so go to patreon to see how you can help this show grow and continue like the show subscribe or just share one of the episodes on facebook on your facebook News, news feed. All of it actually does help. Go to threatwire.net for all the things. And with that, I am Shannon Morris, and I will see you on the internet. Cats.